thanks for joining us. Chris, if we can just start with the one day squad, you're, you're not in it. Is that a disappointment or was it always the plan that you would take a bit of a break now after the test series where you bowled quite a lot? I'm not sure. I mean, I think I've, it's a combination. I've been, I think I've been given a rest, um, and I think my loose things they want to give, you know, some extras a go. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm disappointed not, not to be in the one-day squad um, after, you know, I thought I, I bowled reasonably well in Australia um, and, you know, played, played, I think, two games in the World Cup. Um, so I'm, I'm disappointed, but you know, my, my focus now is to move on to the India series and, and be ready for that. And um, are you sort of all that likes to keep bowling and get overs under your belts? Want you? What you found with them? Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, I think this summer has sort of proved that a little bit. I think um, you know, I've, I've almost improved with every game I've played in, and I've felt better with every game I've played in. So, even though I'm, I'm having a bit of a rest here, I think it's important that I still, you know, tick over and, and get enough overs under my belt. I'm playing uh, a few 2020 games for Surrey, and there's a, a four-day game against Kent on the on the 10th. So, that's that's good preparation. I have a, a good couple of weeks bowling before for the first Test match. Um, but at the same time, it gives me a little bit of opportunity to to go and do some training in the gym and, and build up my strength stuff and, and making sure I'm fresh and ready to go against India. If we just look back at the Test series, I mean, it finished in a fine note for you, a, a six foot at the Rose Bowler and, and, and the Man of the Series award. You, it can't have really gone much better for you that series. It must have been great for you to be able to build on what you did in Australia. Yeah, I mean, the second inning at Cardiff was, was, was brilliant. Um, unfortunately, Lords didn't bowl quite as well as I wanted to. Um, that was probably the one negative about the series for me. And, uh, you know, going back to the Rose Bowl and, and getting six wickets and, you know, getting a five for is, is very special. Um, that my, my plan over the last sort of year or so is to try and take more fifers because I haven't probably taken enough in my career. So to get a couple in Test cricket so far uh, is is very sort of motivating, motivating for me and uh, and and great to be the man of the series and, and hopefully continue that form again uh, when India comes around. You were promoted to the new ball in the second innings. Was that something you were champing at the bit for during the series? Did did you do you feel that's your best role with, with the new ball in hand? Um, I think I can play a role in either 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 way, and and sometimes you know con conditions. Can dictate that, but uh, I, I said it last week. Um, I feel I can offer quite a bit with the new ball with, with my bounce, and you know, I do I, I do enjoy being with the new ball. And at the same time, I don't mind bowling with the ball, which is you know a little bit older, maybe ten overs old, because you do, generally do get this, the swing and the lack off the ball. So. I mean, either way, I mean, but like I said, with the new ball, you do get that extra bounce. And, um, you know, I feel I've you know done reasonably well with the new ball since since when I've had the opportunity to take it for England. So uh, either way, I'm happy, but, you know, I do enjoy taking the new ball at the same time. Do you enjoy your partnership with James Anderson? Are you kind of the, the, the pitch up swing of him and the slightly more back of a length of you? Do you think you complement each other nicely? Uh, definitely, I do enjoy bowling with Jimmy. I played you know, most of my test matches with Jimmy, but I think the one at Lords which he missed. Um, I think we just work together well as a partnership. You know, we build pressure, and uh, I think that's you know that's proved with with the results. Really, I enjoy bowling with him in Australia. I think we built built up pressure very well, along with uh, Tim Bresden with the with the test match he he played, and and that's generally when we when we play best, we build up pressure well as a side. Swanley does a great job, you know, tying up an end and, and obviously taking his wickets as well. Um, but no, Jimmy Jimmy is a great person to you know, open up with and, and you know, form a good partnership with. David Saker said some very nice things about you during the test. You've been compared in certain quarters to Joel Garner-esque in, in your performances. How, how, how important has David been in your development as a test bowler since you've come back into the team? Um, I mean, he's just been probably my main backing, really. I mean, I, he's, he certainly spotted me last year and I think got me back involved in the England side. And I think he, 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 he rates me as, as a cricketer and, and he's backed me all the way along with, with the other management. So um, I felt very comfortable working with him and, and, and Andy Flower and, and the other guys since coming back in. And, uh, you know, it's nice to you know have him there and when things aren't quite going your way, have a, have a bit of a chat. Obviously, after Laws, things didn't go quite as well and we had to adjust. And But it's nice to have a, a bowling coach there and when things aren't quite going right. And uh, and it was great to put that right, okay, you know, going back to the Rose Bowl and taking you know, six wickets and seven wickets in the match. What sort of a coach is, is David when things don't go well? Is he just a straight talking, you've got to pull your socks up? Or is he a bit more analytical? How, how does he deal with you guys when things perhaps don't go as well as you planned? Yeah, I think he, he keeps it very simple. He doesn't overcomplicate things. Um, I think he's a you know honest speaking Australian really, um, uh, and, I, and I like that about him. You know, he's very easy to talk to. Um, obviously, we do have analysts and Hawkeye and those sort of things. But as a bowler, you know, you know when you've bowled well, you know when you haven't bowled well. Generally, I know when I've put the ball in the right areas. And, and Lords, for example, I wasn't quite up to scratch, and, and we all knew that. And speaking to Sakes after after the game and, and towards the Rose, before the Rose Bowl test, we knew we had to put a few things right. Um, you know, and and that's what it was. Just have a bit, a bit of a chat, and you know, maybe 
work on a couple of, of technical things if, if it was that. Um, but he's he's been very good and, and great to have him around. Have him around. You can just throw forward now to, to, to the India series. It's probably going to be the next cricket you'll play for England. In sort of a quirk of fate, it's the Test team you made your your debut against four years ago. Do you think that will? Stand you in good stead. There's going to be quite a few crossovers from that Indian team. Sachin's going to be there, Rahul's going to be there, Dhoni's going to be there. Do you think that will stand you in good stead when you come to bowl against them in a, in a few weeks' time? Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't think it can do me any harm, really. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, I made my debut against them you know, four years ago and it was great to have that opportunity. It was certainly hard work, those, those test matches. I think two of those test matches I bowled 40 overs in, in, in innings. And, uh, you know, it was a case of just being very patient. Um, I think it'll be, you know, much of the same. You know, they have got a couple of hard hitting guys in Dhoni and, and Sowag. Um, but, you know, guys like Dravid, Tendulkar, you know, we know they're very patient batsmen, they're very hard to get out. So, um, you know, I th- at the same time, that's, that's what I think I'm good at is, 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 is banging a- an area pretty, you know, consistent, consistently being aggressive. Uh, and, and also having that patience, really, and you know that's something I learned from playing those those three Test matches uh, four years ago in 2007. That uh, you know just being patient is is key, really, and hopefully we can you know go go one step step further than we did last time and beat them because we, we unfortunately lost that series. And I I guess it'll be a, a terrific challenge for all the bowlers and including yourself against what is renowned as the best batting lineup in the world. This seems England this England team seems to be a team that raises their game when faced with the big challenges. Do you, do you think that will, that will help the team find another level? There was some talk that perhaps the intensity lacked occasionally in the Sri Lanka series. Do you think facing the world champions as they're, as, 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 as they're widely called will, will find, help the team lift to another level? Definitely. I think obviously Australia, that was a, a huge thing for everyone. The Ashes playing in the Ashes is, is very special and you naturally get motivated. Um, and I think, again, against India, I think things are going to be Huge crowds. It's going to be a very good buzz this summer when they come over, and we know they're a, you know, at the moment the number one side in the world. We know they've got a very good batting lineup, um, but at the same time, you know, I don't know if there was a lack of motivation. It was perhaps at times against Sri Lanka a little bit frustrating because of all the rain breaks and things. Um, but you know, we're always very motivated to get out there, and um, we're certainly looking forward to these Test matches coming off. I think there'll be a great buzz around uh, you know, when these four Test matches are on. And um, we saw in, in the card of Test how. Um, how exciting a sense the Test Creek can be when you have a pitch with some life in it. Uh, pr- pr- reports of perhaps Lords was a bit too flat, Cardiff was a, a little bit. So how important do you think it is um, that, that the Test match pitches coming against India make the most of what advantage England have in terms of tall bowlers like yourself, sw- swing bowlers like Jimmy? It's important to play the home advantage in, in the coming few months. I mean, certainly, I think it, it just bodes well for Test cricket. You know, I mean, the, the Rosewell pitch, in our opinion, was was a perfect Test wicket. I mean, it had some pace and and, and some carry. Um, you know, people said it was doing all sorts. I don't think it was doing all sorts day one. You know, there was certainly a bit in it with the conditions. Um, but it, it was, you know, a, a good Test wicket. And, you know, uh, the lads that batted on and said it was a great pitch to bat on, more because the ball was coming on. Um, there was a bounce there. And it's generally more entertaining cricket to watch. Um, you know, I think... Possibly the pitches at, at Cardiff at Laws were a tad slow, and the, and the, and the cricket was a little bit stale at times. Um, but you know, playing on the pitches in Australia, for example, I think they're they're the best wickets, you know, best cricket pitches, and you know, cricket wickets around the world. So, uh, if we can sort of create that, I think it, it one helps us um, in the way we go about our plans and helps helps our attack. And I think that's important if you're playing in, in your home Test matches and on your in your home country, that you should be able to produce the conditions you want. Obviously India are used to playing in their conditions. We all obviously find it tough when we go over there, so it's it's about making sure that you know we try and use you know those things to our advantage. Do you do you think the key is going to be playing aggressive cricket against the Indians or playing a holding type of cricket that was very successful in Australia, you had Tim Bresman banging away outside of Stump and you and Jimmy took advantage of that. Do you think that is in some way the be- when this team plays its best cricket, when it sort of dries up the pressure and then, and then builds on that, or, or do you think it's time this team um, moves to another level and, and, and finds finds an aggressive side in, in all the test matches they play? I think it's. I think we can sort of do both, really. I think you know when we're on top and we know we're bowling well, we can blow sides away for a hundred, for example. I mean that happened at, at the MCG. Um, but at the same time, test cricket is not easy. We know that it's a patience game. Um, you know, if you bowl a bad ball, generally a good player they're going to hit it for four. So it's um, about being very patient. And I believe when we play our best cricket, when we're patient, we bowl in a unit. We don't leak runs. We don't leak boundaries. Um, you know, minimise the four balls. 
um, and go from there really. Um, and I know when we're you know we're bowling well, um, we generally our, our run rate is around two and over. You know we're not getting letting sides get too far away, and, and that pressure builds, and, and we take wickets. So you know it'll be a combination of being aggressive against the Indian guys. So like I said, hopefully there is a bit of pace and bounce in some of the wickets. Um, we can use that to our advantage with the tall guys we've got. And um, but at the same time, you know it's Test cricket. It's going to be tough, and, and we've got to work hard.